Hello everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I am here with my best friend, Taco Bell. <laughs> who am I? You know who I am. Serrano is J. There we go. He is going to actually be in this Blu-ray DVD update. Um, you know, <laughs> interesting fact, last time Serrano is J has done one of these videos with me, it was actually in my first ever DVD update I've ever done on this channel a couple years ago. Do you remember being in my first ever video for this segment? No. I'm just kidding, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like a couple years later, he's now doing another one with me. I am filming this a little bit late because I actually got these movies like last week. One, the first one I'm about to show you, I got on Monday the 18th of July, I believe. Yeah, it was the 18th of July. And the ones I got from Target are the ones I got on Tuesday the 19th of July. Sarah so, J, go ahead and pass me the one from Monday. And, wow. yep. <laughs> So this was from Monday, July 18th that I got to you guys. It was actually at a mall because he and I hanged out at a mall and we went to FYE and I got a couple of movies from there. Yeah, we went to go celebrate this guy's birthday, but let's just put it, I don't know, you want to explain your, your how old you turned? That's up oh, to you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 22 years old. He, he took me out to eat at AJ's Diner. Yes. So for the first set, you guys, it's actually a trilogy and the sequel is going to be coming out. So I'm going to be showing you all three at the same time. It is the Bourne Trilogy. The Bourne Identity, the Bourne Supremacy, and the Bourne Ultimatum. And of course, with Jason Bourne coming out, really looking forward to that. I actually got all of these movies for $5 each. If you guys see, the original price is $14.99. But when me and Serrano J went to this place, they were actually having it for $5 each. So I'm like, you know what? These movies for $5 each, why not? So when it comes to the Bourne trilogy, I think this is an awesome trilogy. I like the one with Jeremy Renner as well. I think that's a very underrated film. But with the Matt Damon ones, yeah, this is an awesome trilogy. Like, the action is very well filmed. The Identity, being the first time he ever did an action movie, he actually did a very good job for being a first-time action star at that time. Yeah. And, um, you know, Paul Gre uh, no, sorry, Doug Lyman, he directed the first one, then Paul Greengrass directed the last two. And I thought direction-wise, they were all really good. And just something how Doug Lyman and Paul Greengrass directed the action and all these movies have all been very well done. There's a really good storyline behind it. There's a very interesting mystery involving Matt Damon's character and find out who he is. It's three movies building up to who he truly is, you know, leading up to now Jason Bourne. So, you know, I, I really enjoy this franchise. That includes the Bourne legacy with Jeremy Renner. So those are honestly my thoughts. Very happy to be owning these movies now. Um, your thoughts on just the trilogy as a whole, Sir J? For me, I thought it was like a great story for each of all, all of them. And how the storyline went from the first one all the way to the third one, this last one right here. Yeah. Uh, the directors did a per like for all three of them, did a good, great job actually for them. Oh, yeah. Even for the actors, for each one of them, are, are the best actors for this kind of movie. It made it like, uh, like a great. Like trilogy of all three since they're making a fourth one of so that was from Monday the 18th now the next movies I'm about to show you are from Tuesday the 19th so the starting from Target I bought myself the other three my aunt actually bought for me that you're about to see but this one I actually bought myself with the birthday money and that is Kung Fu Panda 3 the third film I've been waiting five years for because you know with Kung Fu Panda 2 ending with the cliffhanger in 2011 I had to wait five years for this to come out and it was worth waiting five years for I really really enjoyed Kung Fu Panda 3 the animation is still just absolutely gorgeous as far as DreamWorks Animation Studios goes it's definitely one of their most colorful most beautiful animated movies definitely I love the characters you know the voice actors from Jack Black to Angelina Jolie to Dustin Hoffman Jackie Chan and then you know the new additions like Brian Cranston voicing Poe's father and then J.K. Simmons as the antagonist the, the way Poe faces against Kai the antagonist without getting any 
details. That was really great. Oh, and the music in this film. It's just absolutely beautiful. Comedy's really good. There's some nice emotional moments in this film. And overall, I just think it's a very solid movie. I definitely really enjoyed Kung Fu Panda 3. And I'm definitely happy to be owning this movie now. Uh, so, Sorry Jay, have you seen this movie? Yes, I have seen it. And what did you think of this movie? I thought it was hilarious, like... For this not this one, newer one, it makes like compared to the second one, it made a huge like you said a huge cliffhanger. Yeah. Where like who is his family and all this, and it gets a good storyline. Who is his father and his and then the father explains how his mother was. Oh yeah. Of her personality and everything, he knows how where his family is and now he knows the location. It's a really good movie for as a family like family kids movie, and for people always questioning out there always like who's their real family and it makes you wonder oh like wherever you are or wherever you are where you came from that is your family yeah so it makes it like a good point to point like to explain for everybody who's looking for a better family or where they came from originally that this explains it yeah definitely it was really nice how um, we discovered more about the family in this film because that's what basically the second film was leading up to. Yeah. So, yeah, I could definitely agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. All right, sorry, Jay, the next movie. What movie? Uh, the Intern. Um, been wanting to get this movie for a while. It's a um, movie that it just describes a sweet movie. Like, it's a simple movie, but it's just a very sweet movie. It's like one of those movies where if you're feeling down, you can watch it, and it just instantly cheers you up. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I really enjoyed this movie personally. I think Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway, they all do a really good job. And the intern, and then, of course, you know, like, Adam Devine and... <laughs> And the rest of the ca and the rest of the cast in this movie, they were all really great. Nancy Myers, she's the one that wrote and directed this film. She's the one that brought us movies like The Devil Wears Prada and all that. And I thought she did a really good job with this movie. It's just a really nice movie to watch. It's very funny too. I wasn't expecting this movie to make me laugh so hard in some parts, but I was actually surprised at how funny some parts were. Have you seen this movie, Sarah? No, but I have seen the trailer of it. But it looks a really good movie, though. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a chance to go see it, but I saw the trailer. It looks like a good movie. This is one of the movies, by the way, that my aunt actually bought for me as part of my birthday gift, and that's going to include the last two you're going to see in this update. So, special, special thanks to my aunt. Now, the next movie, Where the Wild Things Are. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, interesting story I have regarding this movie. I remember when I didn't really have expectations with this film. It came out, I believe, in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was in theaters around the same time as the first Paranormal Activity. I remember my mom and my brother, they went to go see Paranormal Activity back at the time where I was a huge wuss and didn't want to <laughs> see horror movies at all. I'm like, you know what? You guys can watch that. I'm going to go ahead and give Where the Wild Things Are a chance. So I did. I saw this movie in theaters by myself. And I'm honestly glad I saw this movie in the theaters because this movie was a really pleasant surprise. It's a very weird movie. Like, it's definitely different for a family movie. I wouldn't even call it a kid's movie, to be honest, because it does have moments that can be too dark for kids. Mm -hmm. So I honestly wouldn't even describe it as a kid's movie, to be honest. It would be basically for like a teenager movie. Yeah, like... Like, it's a PG-rated movie, but I think it's one of those PG-rated movies that's aimed more towards teenagers and adults than it is for kids. Yeah, they should put it PG-13. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I have to agree with you considering some of the content they have in this movie. Like, yeah, Max Records. <coughs> Max Records was really good as a young boy in this film, and how he would interact with the other creatures in this film were really cool. And I thought the voice actors, you know, from like... Forrest Whitaker to Chris Cooper to James Gandolfini, Catherine O'Hara. You have a lot of talented people in this film. And also cinematography, it's 
it's seriously just plain beautiful to look at. Like when you look at the sunset, when you look at the trees, when you look see the characters doing some kind of wacky situation. <laughs> yeah, it it looks really great. And it's very well directed by Spike Jones, most definitely. Where the wild things are, I've been wanting to own it and I'm definitely glad I do because it's such a unique movie. It's a breath of fresh air and it's definitely one of the biggest surprises of two thousand nine, in my opinion. Have you seen this movie, Sarah? Yes. I haven't seen it and I actually read the kid's book of it when I was small like little, that's a kid. So you've read the book of it? Yes. Oh, okay. But it's pretty much overall for book wise and for this kind of movie wise, it's pretty much really good for either way. Yeah. But you know, like from different perspective, even though one will say a different story and this one will show uh, a little bit more of detail into the book. Yeah. Uh, my perspective is really good. And for the final movie of the update, Sarari J. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. This is the ultimate cut, so it has both the theatrical version and the extended edition. So when it comes to, I'll be talking about the theatrical version for now, but as far as the theatrical goes, um, if you guys have seen my review from earlier this year, I think this is a really good movie. It's a lot of fun. It's very solid. It's one of the most underrated movies because critically, this movie did not get good reviews. I think the action sequences are very, very exciting. You know, the action sequences with Batman are awesome. I thought, of course, Henry Cavill, he made a great Superman. Ben Affleck proved to be a really good Batman. And honestly, yeah, it's just a really fun, really solid superhero movie, in my opinion. And I'm definitely happy to be having this. Uh, so did you get to see this movie, Sir No, John? I have not, but I've seen the trailer of it, but I can tell you that in my perspective, it looks like a great movie. I can't tell if it's bad or not, but I can tell you that it looks kind of good as a trailer movie. Yeah. I think knowing you, like knowing your taste in movies, I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Yeah, because I'm a huge fan of Batman and Superman. Like, I don't, oh, yeah. I don't choose as who's better. I just know they're both good as superheroes, you know. Like you can appreciate them as their own superhero. Yes. All right, you guys. So I figured before I wrap up this DVD Blu-ray update, I figured why not give you my review for the ultimate edition of Batman v Superman. Dawn of Justice. That's right, you can get a DVD update slash review into one video. Pretty cool, right? But as far as what I could say about the Ultimate Cut, I really enjoyed the Ultimate Cut. Does it really change my opinion on the film, however? To me, it doesn't. At the end of the day, when I saw the Ultimate Cut of Batman v Superman, I still felt like, personally, I watched the exact same movie just with little added scenes just scenes here and there that were added now things that were added in the ultimate cut were like superman you actually do get a little bit more superman and one of the things that baffles me about the theatrical cut is there's one specific superman scene it deals with the courtroom scene not gonna spoil what it is after what happened in that courtroom scene you know in the theatrical cut it just cuts to black but in this version, there's more to that scene. There's an added scene to that courtroom scene. And I'm actually baffled that got cut out because it actually showed what Superman was doing was very important. So I don't know why that got cut out of the theatrical version. But yeah, you do get a little bit more Superman. Jenna Malone is added in this film. And I can see why she's actually cut out of the theatrical version because... She wasn't really needed. Like, definitely, I'm glad that they cut her out. Although, yes, I still really enjoyed Jenna Malone. That's really cool to see her in this film since she was cut out of the theatrical version. And there is a little plot involving one of the victims of what happened at the end of Mass Steel. You actually follow this certain victim. And 
I can also see why that wasn't in a theatrical cut because I didn't really see how that served for the storyline. So honestly, that's really all you get. You just get Jenna Malone in here. You get a little more Superman or Clark Kent. You get an added situation with this victim from the Man of Steel climax. There's also more to the Africa situation in this film, which I really liked, and I'm actually surprised they didn't make it a theatrical cut. And you actually do get to see more of Jimmy Olsen. So there's definitely things they add in this film that were cool. But really, other than those scenes that were added that either added more to the scenes from the theatrical or didn't really add much, you know, I still feel like I watched the same movie. And it's nice that Superman did have a few more scenes added, because if you guys look back at my review for the theatrical version, I did say I felt like Superman was just a little bit underused, just a little bit. So the ultimate cut, I still think it's good. It doesn't really change my opinion. But but I still think it's good. I really enjoyed the ultimate cut. I honestly enjoyed it as much as the theatrical cut. I can honestly watch both cuts and still really enjoy the exact same movie. I will say my biggest flaw with the ultimate cut, the ultimate cut is rated R. Yet I don't see how. Like even if it's a little bit more violent from the theatrical, the violence is still PG-13. So why the hell is the ultimate cut rated R? I actually can't believe they got you hyped up for an R rated cut when it's no different from the theatrical cut. It's nice to get 30 more minutes of a movie I personally liked. I like the ultimate, I like the theatrical, and if I were to rate the ultimate cut, it's still, just like with the theatrical, three out of four stars. That is my Blu-ray duty update. Thank you Smarties J for doing another one with me after doing the first one with me back a couple of years ago. No Thank problem. you very much. No problem. And of course you guys in the comments down below let me know what you think about the Bourne trilogy. Uh, your thoughts on Kung Fu Panda 3. Your thoughts on the intern. Your thoughts on where the wild things are. And your thoughts on Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. And what you think of the ultimate cut. How did the ultimate cut compare to the theatrical cut in your opinion? So you guys, <laughs> why were you laughing? Because <laughs> I was just going like that to you, you're the quick camera for all the viewers out there. <laughs> oh, okay. Shit, I didn't even notice. <laughs> so you guys, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, here with... The Burrito Hero of Serrano Risky. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget that the both of us will always have... Burrito Power. And Tiger Power. And Tiger Power and Tacos. Tiger Power. Da-da-da. <laughs>